Hello, cellos. You know that never gets old. Okay, so um, I want to talk a little bit about reading the uh, these new copies of, of the belt songs that I've been giving out recently. Uh, I realized I hadn't done any kind of tutorial on on it. Um, I've made it look a lot more like regular music, but it does have a little bit extra information in it that I'd like to go through to help you make sure that you're you're playing uh, on the on the correct. Um, correct string and, and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do, actually what we see right in front of you, is the first couple lines of the Green Belt song, Old MacDonald, and uh, I want to just go over in general what the rules are. I'm not going to go over the entire song uh, because in terms of playing the whole thing, I've got a few videos for that already, but just in terms of using the, the, the page uh, to help you figure out what's going to be on what string and what's not. Um, you know, if you if you can figure out the first two lines, the rest of it actually is really not too difficult. Um, so first thing to talk about is over here on the left. And by the way, cello uh, music is going to have slightly different rules than the violin and viola music uh, do uh, does um, because of just where these these notes end up falling on on, on the staff. So where these letters are, the A, the D, and the G, which by the way, of course, are the um, a string, the D string, and the G string. I didn't put the C string on because we don't use that until uh, red belt. And even the G string, we don't we don't use it in this belt level. Uh, but we did use it back in yellow belt for land of the silver birch. Uh, so you know, with that updated copy of for you know for for future cellists, uh, that they, they would uh, they would need that. So I didn't want to take that away, um, just for the, you know for the sake of this. Uh, for this belt level. So notice that these letters are kind of uh, right in front of the end of, of some of these lines. The A is right, uh, you know, right in front of that, that very top line. The D is right in front of the middle line. The G is right in front of the bottom line. Uh, that's because the notes for those open strings are going to be on those lines. Again, this is, this is different than violin and viola music their open string notes are in spaces, they're in between lines. But for cello, they're actually on the lines. And uh, in a way, it actually makes it a little easier for you. You might be happy to know that. Um, if it doesn't make it easier, just tell yourself it makes it easier, and, and that will usually uh, help as well. Now, uh, if you take a look at the notes in the very first line, all of the notes in the very first line, we, you know, first of all, we look across, we see this big gray band going uh, from left to right. And that is to indicate all of the notes that are on the D string. Now, this is not common in regular music. We don't often see that. But that's there to help you see what part of the staff, the musical staff lines and spaces, are involved with the D string. So um, in that entire first line, we have seven notes there. And then the thing at the end is, is a rest. We, we, don't, we don't play it. We just sort of take a breath and then go, go to the next line. All of the blue notes... All of the red notes are right in inside of that gray area. The two black notes are kind of halfway poking into it from below. But remember how I just said the D string notes are on that middle line, right? And those are black ones, so they have to be open strings. Those are your open Ds. So if you can remember that the Ds themselves are uh, kind of pushing up <laughs> into the gray area, then then the rest of it is not going to be too difficult. Okay, that's um, we got to remember that middle line is your D line, and that that little range of notes just above it in that gray area are going to be what the notes on the D string are going to be. So the blues are the fourth finger D string. The reds is the first finger. Uh, D string and those two black ones for for the uh, the old of old McDonald and and the word string are going to be on uh, the open D's. In the next line, we have some notes that are much higher up. Now, when we when we're trying to figure out what string we're going to play on, we have to see uh, we are or we are always looking at where the what we call the note head, which is the oval part of it. It doesn't matter where the stem goes. That's that little stick part that uh, in, in almost all cases here is kind of hanging down. Um, that doesn't tell us anything about, about the string. 
we have to see where the oval part is. Those first two notes, those first two red notes, they're up above the gray area. So they can't, they're, they're not going to be on the D string. They're going to be on the A string. And they are first fingers, but they're first fingers on the A string. And remember that the A string line is the top line. So they are above that, therefore they are A string. They're above the gray area, therefore they are A string. The two notes that, like right underneath that says A, A, um, should be a clue that those are A string. Now the A string notes are kind of in the gray too, okay? So uh, that, that might be a little bit confusing, but if, if we remember that the top line is the A, um, middle line is D, top line is A, then we should be able to uh, kind of tell those those two apart. Um, the very last, or the not the very last note of that one, but the the next one that's it's labeled underneath with a with the letter G, like B B A A G, um, that is back in the gray. So that is the blue note back on the D string. Okay, and a few ways to kind of remember that the since that top line is the A, this those uh, the blue one, the G is it's a step below it. It's like one position below it. You can't play it on the A string because the A, the lowest note you can play on the A is the A. That's why it's called it. Uh, so it has to be on on the D string. Okay, but also you know, I give you that little gray gray uh, band as well, so you can kind of see that. Um, now, one way of kind of checking as you are learning this piece to see if if especially at this one uh, this one spot, th this is an area where because we have to cross strings, we got to come from the A string back to the D string when we're playing B, B, A, A, G. Uh, one way to check that is if you're listening to your playing, which of course you should always do, if it sounds like this, B, B, A, A, G, uh, then it doesn't sound right. It sounds like a question, right? If, if we were singing the, the original song, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, right? Doesn't doesn't sound right. And that would tell you that there's there's something on on the wrong string there. And the way I'm singing that would be how it would generally sound. I mean, of course, it'd be on, on a cello in this case. That would be how it would sound uh, if I accidentally played the blue uh, the fourth finger note on the A string instead. So you know we we just sort of listen for the direction of of these notes. When the notes are moving down, they're getting lower and lower in the staff, the sound should be getting lower and lower. It's all about the sound. Right? The sound and how they look on the page should always match. Right? Um, and, uh, and if they don't, then, yeah, then, then something's going on. Uh, let's take a quick look at the purple belt because it has the exact same rules. Now, there's a little bit extra information in, in here. Uh, to go over real quick, you know, we got this little fraction that says three four. That's really not very important right now. Um, that has to do with how the beats are grouped. And again, we're just looking at the first couple lines because if you can figure out the first couple lines, you can figure out the next two, right? They're, they're very very similar. Uh, we still have the letters for the three open strings that we're using. We still have the gray band. And we still have black notes, red notes, and blue notes. Now, some of those notes aren't completely filled in. That has nothing to do with uh, how, like, what, or with what kind of fingering you're using. So it's it's all to do with rhythm. It's 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 a longer note. You you move your bow longer and slower than than the other notes. Um, but it, but they're not fingered any differently. You use the same. Like, you know, for example, on the word boat, it's a blue note. And it's still four fingers. It's in the gray, therefore it's it's four fingers on the D string. So let's take a quick look at um, for the first five notes, which are speed bonnie boat like, um, and those are all in the gray. Again, remembering the middle line notes uh, for speed and for the knee of bonnie, uh, the the first and third note in this. So those first uh, the well, the black notes there, those are, are the middle, on the middle line, those are your open D string notes. For bird on the wing, we, that top line is the A line, right? And the other notes, on and wing, uh, the red, on is the red one, wing is the blue one that's up way up high there. 
those are up above the gray, therefore they have to be on the A in, in this case. So uh, notice that for wing, it's up so high that we had to add a little extra shelf for it. We call that a ledger line, just so we can tell exactly how much higher it is uh, th than that. But you know, for right now, you're seeing that it's blue, so you can just put your fourth finger down, and you're seeing that it's out outside of the gray. It's above the gray, so above the gray is A. Above starts with A, right? So above, uh, it's great. Um, the next line, onward the, we have notes, uh, the, the two red ones for on and the are up above the top line, and word, on word, right, that second note, is that top line A also, right, the open A. So therefore, those first three notes are on the A string. Sailors cry and cry are D string notes. Sailors is pretty easy because it's right in, in the gray, pretty clear to play those on the gray. Cry and cry are on the middle line. Again, they're kind of hanging down a little bit below it, but that middle line is your D. So all the same rules apply. Okay, now um, eventually you're not going to have this gray band and you won't have the little letters on the side for reference. So what we're really trying to learn mostly is where the open strings are. If you can remember those, then you'll always be able to figure out what string you can play on. So, uh, like I say, it's kind of nice that a cello, a top line, middle line, bottom line. The the, the other two lines, they, they're, those aren't individual strings. It's a coincidence that, that, that it works out so well for the, for the three that we have. But if you can remember, like the A is, is your top line, D is your middle line, G is your bottom line, um, then it'd be then when you go to brown belt and black belt where we don't have as much of this information anymore, you'll actually have an advantage over the violin and viola players. And let's face it, you've got this big instrument to lug around. You're looking for all the advantages you can get, right? So um, I hope this helps. If, uh, if you'd like me to clarify more uh, or to, to explain things more for you, please let me know. Uh, it's much easier for me to do these than it is to... Uh, that even teach in, in the lessons because in the lessons we're, so, we're always so rushed and we got so many people to get through and uh, it's, it's, it's never ideal. But if I can help in any way when you're practicing, then when you come in for a lesson, then we know that you'll be really successful. And that's, that's the goal. I want you to be uh, successful. So take care and I will see you soon. Go practice.